So Puffy put on a little show or a little, a little uh, presentation. I think this is before that fucking. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Tell your friends to give my friends, and we can be friends. We can be friends. He fucking ruins so many good Biggie songs. He just fucking ruins them. I, I he did. Yeah, talk, talk your shit, boy. <laughs> Tell me he doesn't ruin talk so shit, many. Boy. All of them. Dude, All of them. every time he's in a Biggie song, he fucking ruins it. Drop, 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 drop. Gangster rap is really a mirror of American society. They are young people being gangsters, playing gangster. But the real gangsters are in the White House with, with suits on that destabilize governments Murder leaders, gangsters in the state house, gangsters in city hall, gangsters in corporate America. Only these young people are bringing it all out in the open. So before you curse the fruit, yeah. check the tree that produced it. And, and Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of the Gatsby Podcast. I'm your host, Joe Guy. Yeah, it is Dan B and son. <laughs> what, are, what are we doing today? What are we doing today, Joe? Yeah, I wonder what we're doing today. Uh, the name of our album that we're dropping today is called Rap Conspiracy. Yeah. Turn your jersey back around. <laughs> You're right. I thought... I thought I thought something felt weird. Oh, you put it on wrong? You just wake up or something? <laughs> Literally just woke up. Oh, okay. Hi. Right. Okay. You know. I'm out all I'm out all night making moves. You know what I mean? You you, you look ridiculous. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Just try to be comfortable, man. Oh. I just want to be comfortable in my own skin. Okay. I feel you. I feel you. You're not you're not feeling like uh like you need to be a woman, right? It is 2023. I'm not judging. Is it Sunday? Are you? Do you do that on Sundays? Sundays usually. Oh, the sex call makes me. Oh my gosh! I gotta go. What are you glitching? Oh wow! We're gonna talk what? about we're gonna talk about Eminem today too. Look <laughs> at that. I thought we spoke about M already. Yeah. We're, well, he's we're doing a rap conspiracy episode, yo. Do you want to start with that? Uh, we can start uh, with that. His is the weirdest shit, so I wanted to wait till the end so people don't turn us off. <laughs> okay. All right, we'll start with that. So uh, there's a conspiracy that in 2006 he was killed in a car crash by the Illuminati, and then he was replaced because there's from 2004 to 2009 he didn't come out with an album. He um, was in the same car with Princess Diana. I remember that. No, no, but she. Different. That's another. That's a different episode. Different, different, but yeah, she was, she was about to expose. We don't get to get into her, but she was about to expose the royal family. We will get into them though. They're they're part of the episode. They'll probably be in the Who's Day episode. Dude, that's what I used to call it when I flash girls back in the day. I'd be like, look, I'm exposing the royal family. Oh my god, I may have made I may have made that up just now. Oh, that would have been a good one though. You can cut that out. We're not. I'm not cutting anything out. <laughs> We're just going to let this episode ride. <laughs> this fucker, let it rip. <laughs> let it rip. <laughs> All right, so, uh, and the reason why people think that about Eminem is because his rap style changed completely and his face changed completely. Check out this video. Listen, man. You think that's the same guy? Yeah, it's yep, I do. <laughs> All right. Doesn't look like the same guy. Exact same person. Exact same person. <laughs> the rap style is warped, You're running out the morgue with your damn mother's curl cord and the corpse. You sounded exactly like Eminem there. Uh, yeah, plastic surgery, man. You know, 
Yeah, but you saw his chin change, his ears change. You can't his cheek his cheekbones are way up here when they used to be down here. Nah, he lost. He he started eating right. He got a trainer. You don't change your bo- your facial bone structure. Now the conspiracy, like a lot of people think he's cloned. I think he was just replaced because if you listen to Eminem early on, he's all about anti-government and all this other shit. And then later on, he's all like, "Hot coffee pot," and he's all fucking. I got vote for drops. Hillary. Vote oh. for Hillary. <laughs> well, you know, he's a, you know, yeah, yeah. He's a he's definitely not Eminem, and he's MK Ultra, as you see in the last episode. Let me play his freezing real quick for everybody else. <laughs> Actually, 14. no. Seriously, God. don't get trapped. In, in my your head. head. Yeah, I wouldn't wish that on nobody. You should so. address the camera because right now there's a lot of people probably to stay out <laughs> in my head. Good to see you. Say thank you. Thanks, man. Mather. Some of you may know him as Eminem, but he's going to join the Saturday night crew with our music intro starting next Saturday night. But folks, I want to take you to the world premiere of one of his new videos called Berserk. Take a listen. It's headed for the top of the charts. So was that the great Rick Rubin who was uh, helping produce that with you, uh, Marshall, when you did that? Yeah, sorry. Live TV. <laughs> Live TV freaks me out a little bit. No. Um, yes, I'm sorry. What was the question? Is that- <laughs> so you so you agree that he's at least MK Ultra then, right? <laughs> oh yeah, it's yeah. I'd say it's a little weird, man. Yeah. Um, so we'll move on from Eminem. I, I, we don't have to stick stay on Eminem that long. He's not worth it. That's the goat, bro. Nah, How dare you? No, How dare a, you right there's now? a different goat. There's a different goat. And we're gonna that's what the most of the episode is gonna be about, is the real goat. Um But I wanna I wanna do that last. So the real goat. I wanna move I on. I don't know who you're talking about. I wanna move on to uh this guy who re who was recently murdered. Um by the government. In 85, he got arrested because he was printing in magazines that he cures AIDS and mm-hmm. sickle cell and cancer. And they like, that's false advertisement, that's malpractice of medicine, all type of thing. He wasn't no doctor. He mm-hmm. just used herbs and his understanding of herbs. And he went to trial in New York. And he proved in the state of New York on record mm-hmm. that he said, bring me y'all AIDS patients from y'all doctor. He treated them while he was on trial. He said, now have y'all doctors test them. The same was diagnosing with AIDS, had him test them. 77 patients on record in 1985 by his herbs. Why we ain't never heard that? Why they ain't been on TV? They got a Tupac and Biggie, the 55th documentary that they made about the Tupac and Biggie murder. You know what I'm saying? But why we ain't seen no doc on that? Why we ain't, why that's not no headline news? You feel me? What's to me is the story is that he went to trial mm-hmm. against the state of New York and won. Then the feds indicted him. And he went to trial against the feds and won. Why do they kill all holistic doctors? Messing up the medical industry. It's you playing, you short stopping that grind. Why do they get killed for hustling in front of a nigga spot? You short stopping the grind. And these niggas, they check is billions. You got niggas that get flipped for a couple hundred thousand. So you playing with some pharmaceutical money, you know? And what's crazy, I'm, I'm working on doing a documentary on the trial in 1985 when Dr. Sebi went to trial against New York. Right. Because he, he put a newspaper, he cured AIDS. Yeah. Did, did he, did he, he, he beat the he case. 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 And he went to federal court the next day and beat that case yeah. on record. Yep. And nobody talk about it. So he's talking about obviously our episode six, what's eating you, Doctor Sebi right. curing all these people, and he was making a documentary about the trial, and then what happened before the documentary was finished. Bing bang clap clap. Yup yup. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Yes sir. And he was supposed to meet with an LAPD uh, sergeant or some shit that day. Like he was set up, dude. He was set up and he was killed for what he was about to do. So many, so many artists and, and, and actors and stuff have been killed when they're about to make a documentary exposing government and shit like that. So I'm yeah, almost Nip- Nipsey was a he was a he was a street hero, man. He was a he was he was revered by his culture and the people in his culture. So like it was wild to me that 
they would, you know. His I mean, buddy's going like, to go kill him? Well, you know, like he said, people get flipped over 100000 Um So, yeah, I could, you know, money does talk, unfortunately, for people in, 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 in spots that really need it. But it's crazy to me that somebody would kill like a... a a self-made hero like that for the for their culture and their their people. So we'll get I don't know, man. It's, it's, it's kind of wild. So, but I I see that being a hit job by the government. Yeah, fucking Dude. government. Now we're, mo- we're, mo- <laughs> we're moving pretty quickly, but this is actually going to take a while because I'm about to read a letter that a former record executive wrote. They had a meeting in the in 1991. Okay, I'll just read the letter. I'll try to make it quick. <clears throat> Hello, after more than 20 years, I fi- finally decided to tell the world what I witnessed in 1991. Between the late 80s and early 90s, I was what you may call a decision maker, shot caller, with one of the most established companies in the music industry. I came from Europe in the early 80s and quickly established myself in the business. The industry was different back then. Since technology and media weren't accessible to the people like they are today, the industry had more control over the public and had the means to influence them in any way it wanted. This may explain why in early 1991 I was invited to attend a closed-door meeting with a small group of music business insiders to discuss rap music's new direction. Little did I know what we would be asked to participate in, one of the most unethical and destructive business practices I've ever seen. This meeting was held at a private residence in L.A., I remember about 25 to 30 people being there, most of them familiar faces. Speaking of those I knew, we joked about the theme of the meeting as many of us did not care for rap music and failed to see the purpose of being invited to a private gathering to discuss its future. Among the attendees was a small group of unfamiliar faces who stayed to themselves and made no attempt to socialize beyond their circle. Based on their behavior and formal appearances, they didn't seem to be in our industry. Our casual chatter was interrupted when we were asked to sign a confidentiality agreement preventing us from publicly discussing the information presented during the meeting. Needless to say, this intrigued and in some cases disturbed many of us. What do you think so far? I think you read so well. (laughs) You're very well spoken. (laughs) Uh, I was talking about the content, but thank you, sir. (laughs) Um, Uh, So Puffy put on a little show. Or a little, a little uh, presentation. I think this was before that fucking. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Tell your friends to give my friends, and we can be friends. We can be friends. Fucking ruins so many good Biggie songs. He just fucking ruins them. I, I Pete, Yo, talk talk your shit, boy. <laughs> Tell me he doesn't ruin talk so shit, many. Boy. All of them, dude. All them. Every time he's in a Biggie song, he fucking ruins it. Tell your friends. We could be, we could do this every weekend. <laughs> no, it's crazy. That, that no, it's I hate crazy. you. That I hate you. Your your brother your brother Mike used to fucking love Puff Daddy. He went out and bought his album and it was rocking the shit out of that Mike. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Calling him out. Oh shit! All right. <laughs> you okay there, bud? <laughs> well, my nose. <laughs> He's going to see that and get real mad. <laughs> Is he? <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> oh, shit. All right. All right. I'll get back to it. Okay. The agreement was only a page long, but it was very clear that the matter and consequences were stated that violating the terms would result in job termination. We asked several people that that what this meeting was about and the reason for such secrecy, but couldn't find anyone who had any answers. A few people refused to sign and walked out. No one stopped them. I was attempted to follow, but curiosity got the best of me. A man who was part of the unfamiliar group collected the agreements from us. Quickly after the meeting began, one of my industry colleagues, who shall remain nameless like everyone else, thanked us for attending. He then gave us the floor to a man who only introduced himself by his first name and gave no further details about his personal background. I think he was the owner of the residence, but it was never confirmed. He briefly praised all of us for the success we had achieved in our industry and congratulated us for being selected part of a small group of decision makers. The subject quickly changed as the speaker went on to tell us that, respective, that the respective companies we represented had invested 
in a very profitable industry, which could become even more rewarding with our active involvement. He explained that the companies we work for had invested millions into building into the building of privately owned prisons and that our positions of influence in the music industry would actually impact the profitability of these investments. I remember I, many of us in the group immediately looking at each other in confusion. At the time, I didn't know what a private prison was, but I wasn't the only one. Sure enough, someone asked what the prisons were and what any of us had to do with it. We were told that these prisons were built by privately owned companies that received funding from the government based on the number of inmates. The more, invi- the more inmates, the more money the government would pay these prisons. It was also made clear to us, since these prisons are privately owned, as they become publicly traded, we'd be able to buy shares. Most of us were taken back by this. Again, a couple people were asked what this had to do with us. At this point, my industry colleague, who had first opened the meeting, took the floor again and answered our questions. He told us that since our employers had become silent investors in the prison business, it was now their, in their interest to make sure that these prisons remained filled. Our job would be to help make the prison by marketing music that promotes criminal behavior, rap being the music of choice. He assured us that this would be a great situation for us because rap music was becoming an increasingly profitable market for our companies. And as employees, we'd also be able to buy personal stocks in these prisons. Immediately, silence came over the room. You could have heard a pin drop. How you feel so far? Um, so this would have you to get where it's going. Yeah, this would have to be right before uh, gangster rap came out. So this is like yes, sir. <laughs> yep. Uh, hibby, 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 hibby. Yeah, dude. Yeah, okay. Dude, <clears throat> all, all I could think about is that song with Tupac. All around the world, same song. Yeah. Like rap music, like that. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, like that was party and good times and yeah, slightly disco. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was on like that's uh, hip hop was uh, still uh, just a little, a little bit coke. It wasn't fully coked out. It wasn't crack yet. You know what I mean, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean. So like, yeah, uh, you know, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember. Li- <laughs> <laughs> There's a way to put it. <laughs> that's what it is, right? <laughs> I remember looking around to make sure I wasn't dreaming and saw half the people with jaw would drop jaws. My days was interrupted when someone shouted, "Is this a fucking joke?" At this point, things became chaotic. Two of the men who were part of the unfamiliar group grabbed the man who shouted out and attempted to remove him from the house. A few of us, myself included, tried to re- intervene. One of them pulled out a gun, and we all backed off. They separated us from the crowd, and all four of us were escorted outside. My industry colleague, who had opened the meeting earlier, hurried out to meet us and reminded us that we signed an agreement and would suffer consequences about speaking out publicly, or even those who attended the meeting. I asked him why he was involved with something this corrupt, and he replied that it's bigger than the music business and nothing we'd want to challenge without risking consequences. We all protested as he walked back into the house. I remember word for word the last thing he said. It's out of my hands now. Remember you signed an agreement. He then closed the door behind him. The men rushed us to our cars and actually watched us until we drove off. A million things were going through my mind as I drove away, and I eventually decided to pull over and park on a side street in order to collect my thoughts. I replayed everything in my mind repeatedly, and it all seemed very surreal to me. I was angry at myself for not having taken a more active role in questioning what had been presented to us. I'd like to believe the shock of it all was suspended by better nature. After what seemed like an eternity, I was able to calm myself and make it to my home. I didn't talk or call anyone that night. The next day, back at the office, I was visibly out of it, but blamed it on being under the weather. (coughs) No one else in my department had been invited to the meeting, and I felt a sense of guilt for not being able to share what I had witnessed. I thought about contracting, sorry, contacting the three others who were kicked out of the house, but I didn't remember their names and thought that tracking them down would probably bring unwanted attention. I considered speaking out publicly at the risk of losing my job, but I realized I'd probably be jeopardizing more than my job, and I wasn't willing to risk anything happening to my family. I thought about the men that with the guns and wondered who they were. I had been told that this was bigger than the music business, and all I could do was let my imagination run free. There were no answers and no one to talk to. I tried to do a little bit of research on private prisons, but didn't uncover anything about the music business involvement. Rap acts that talked about politics or harmless fun were quickly fading away as a gangster rap started dominating the airwaves. Only a few months had passed since the meeting, but I suspect that the ideas presented that day had been successfully implemented. 
It was it was as if the order has been given to all major label executives. The meeting was climbing, or the music was climbing the charts, and most companies were more than happy to capitalize on it. Each one of the churn was churning out their very own gangster rap acts as, a, as acts on an assembly line. Everyone bought into it, customers included. Violence and drug use became the central theme of most rap music. I spoke to a few of my peers in the industry to get their opinions on the new trend, but was told repeatedly that that was all about supply and demand. Sadly, many of them expressed that the music reinforced their prejudice of minorities. I quit the mu- I officially quit the music business in 1993, but my heart had already left months before. And then he, you know, says that he's sad and all that. So yeah, they had a fucking meeting to push gangster rap so then consumers, mainly black youth, would become gangsters and fill the prisons. That's that's some wildly deep racist <laughs> shit. <laughs> Yo. For real, dude. <laughs> what was it? All right, here's a rapper talking about how rap rappers have changed not called for and rappers spent more time trying to show the world that we are not drug dealers we're not killers we're not thieves we're intelligent black people and we have a voice that's what rap was about you tell me if rappers about that now I all I know is most rappers want to tell me that they are a killer they sold this amount of weight they will rob you even though they got 400 million dollars in the bank they will stick you up and they don't care what anybody thinks about them because we got this paper and we about to get this money. We about that green, yo. Yo, I'm, I can't make this up. Rap, black music has become the parody of black music. What people used to joke about black music, black music has become that. It's kind of fucked up, man. It, yeah. But it's great. I mean, it's a great business plan. To target the youth and everything else will follow. That's what every big yep. corporation does. Target the yep. youth. Sure does. You're right. You ain't ever lie. All right, bud. What else you got, man? <laughs> so uh, there was a gangster rap group. You may have heard of them. NWA. Fuck the police. Sorry. Yeah, I'm, I heard of them. So there was a there was a beef between the NWA members uh, where one of them went off and started talking about how the other one's wearing lipstick and trans like Dre dressing like a Dre, and shit. Or Dre and Easy Easy E yeah. talking about Dre right. Yeah. I had no idea that you make money off product from Dr. Dre and Snoop. Yeah. Now how did that work out? Basically, I had Dre. Uh signed as exclusive producer and exclusive artist. Mm-hmm. So when Dre tried to make his deal over at Interscope, you know, mm-hmm. I was included for the next six years. So you can say all you want to say. <laughs> Basically, you could diss me all you want, but I'm going to get paid. Because that's why I say Dre Day is only Easy's payday. And that's real. Uh, um, why don't y'all just make up? <laughs> <laughs> he already made up. You ain't never seen him with the lipstick and lace. Oh, no, 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 I mean, no. No, I mean. Yeah. Yeah, so who went to, out of those two, who went to Death Row Records? Dr. Dre, man. Dr. Dre. Dr. Dre. Dr. Dre. Yes, sir. Now, you may know who this guy is. He's a producer. I guess a producer. <laughs> he hung oh. vanilla ice out a window. I got I got a stone. You're wearing you're wearing a stone. I'm wearing a stone. Yeah, on on your 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 Shug Knight stone. Oh, <laughs> Shungite. Shungite. <laughs> Shug um, I call it Shug Knight because it's you know. You're funny. <laughs> you're funny. Uh, but this is him on the the this idiots talk show. Yeah, I'll come check you out. Right. Right. Why the bulletproof vest? Oh, it's not. Oh no, that's just it's new you know, style. It, You've been no, in the no, can no, for a no, while. No, 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 no. <laughs> so all the talk show hosts are so look, wearing. This is a new thing, right? Yeah. See, if somebody gonna do something about it, see, right. technology is so high, right? Right. So if you shoot somebody, 
you go to jail forever. So the kids, you don't want to go to jail forever, right? right? So they got this new thing out there. People sell them all the time. They got this stuff to call, they get blood from somebody with AIDS, yeah. and then they shoot you with it. Oh, so well, that seems happen, bad. That's yeah. a slow death. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> easy, easy thing, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. Okay. Fucking telling you what he did, dude. Straight up telling you on a national broadcast. Lil Easy feels that Easy didn't really die of AIDS. Like if you look at his situation where like all the women around him didn't have AIDS, it came really suddenly and just killed him like right away. He he feels that there was some sort of foul play, like he was injected with something or, or something like that. Do you guys get that feeling at all? I mean, I, I, yeah, me personally, I do as well because, I mean, even to this day, none of his kids, none of his baby mamas, his mistresses, anybody, nobody has came up with HIV or nothing like that. So, I mean, just just rationally thinking something, something had to go on. Yeah, and, and it's just... And it's just ironic because, you know, I know people can live with HIV for years and look normal and look healthy, but, but when you're about to die from AIDS, full-blown AIDS, you're going to look like you're going to die from AIDS. I've seen people that die from AIDS and they look like they have AIDS. Easy didn't look like that at all. Did you also know that Snoop Dogg has been arrested multiple times and he actually came out and admitted to a murder? and he got acquitted of the murder. A lot of rappers think Snoop Dogg is an informant for the FBI because he never actually gets arrested. Like Snoop. Oh, well, Snoop would never come. I mean, Snoop was on, you know, we'd be the murder trial for him, but then he was on probation. Then he got caught with two ounces of marijuana. Then he got caught with guns. And each time it's nothing, they're not gonna violate him. Because for the street guys, the street guys know what I'm talking about. There's no puzzle. I mean, if you get a guy that constantly getting in trouble and never gonna come to prison, that's because he's an informant, he's a rat, yeah. a snitch, yeah. you know. And they're more important to the police on the streets than in here because they let them know what's going on. So yeah, uh, Charles Manson you would get arrested all the time because he was part of those MK Ultra mind control uh, experiment, experiments, I guess. Working for the CIA. And, yeah, he was he was, you know, he would be arrested. They they would contact him when he was in jail and then he would just get released all the time and then the local police would be like, "Eh, it's above my above my pay grade." and just yeah. let him out of jail for all kinds of wild shit. So Yeah. That sounds familiar, huh? Yeah, dude. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, it's like all these artists. Dude, we could have lumped in the whole music industry with all that, but I I got a we're going to do a rock episode with crazy shit that happened to Chester Bennington and and yeah, dude, we're we're all get we're gonna get into it, sir. But today we're focusing on rap. And who is the you, real? You, you, you. Who's the real goat? Because it's not Eminem. Tupac. Tupac. This is all I want to say. For all the people that doubt me, I had no record all my life. Okay, no record, no police record until I made a record. As my video was debuting on MTV, I was behind bars getting beat up by the police department. I got a $10 million lawsuit. They, they said they were settling with me and everything. You know what I'm saying? But nobody cared about that. That one blew up all in the news. And they didn't see me. They did not see me on TV with my eye busted, my head busted. There's pictures of those. In Oakland, you don't, you yes, in Oakland. You don't see them pictures. You see pictures of Tupac coming out of jail and cuffs. You don't see pictures of the police standing over me beating my brains in. You don't see that. But I see that. That's what I see. You know what I'm saying? So it's all real. You think he was also MK Ultra because he he got into some uh, he started doing some wild boy shit his, himself, man. I I got dude, I got the whole story on Tupac. So okay, I don't think he was MK Ultra. Uh, they definitely were brainwashing him in jail. But uh, so he comes out with his first single. They, what he was just talking about, they beat the shit out of him, choked him out, they jaywalked because he was supposedly jaywalking, and then um. At his film premiere for Juice, he was in his limo, and they had a fucking drive-by shooting in his limo. Tried to kill him then. And then he was at the Berean Fest, and he was assaulted and shot by uh, shot at by strangers. There's multiple eyewitnesses that he was just hanging out, and strangers came up and tried to fucking kill him. Then he was coming back from a concert in Atlanta, and two off-duty cops 
use the butt of their gun smashed in his window and try, start shooting at him. He fucking got into the back seat, grabbed his security guard's gun, and started shooting back at them. When the when the actual police got on scene, the two off duty cops, the gun they had was from a an evidence locker, and I forget what they call them, but cops will use those guns to drop them on the scene if there's some kind of shooting that they need done or some shit like that. Yeah. Um, so those cops didn't get arrested. Who got arrested? Tupac got arrested Tupac. for shooting back yeah. at them. Um, and then his manager said this after his death. His manager, who was also his stepfather, said that Tupac was pretending to be a gangster so he could get the Crips and the Bloods to... Um, Gunner doesn't like that. <laughs> no, that's his that's his sound of joy. <laughs> when he scratches his ears, he makes that sound. He's been doing it since oh, he was a yeah, puppy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know I know that sound. All right, bud. <laughs> you okay? All right. Uh, so his manager said he was trying to, he was pretending to be a gangster to get the Crips and the Bloods to like him so then he could change his his music and get political for them because he was actually in L.A. He was getting the Crips and Bloods to do a peace truce and it was working. Like it started in L.A. and then it moved through California and then it started to go through the nation where the Crips and Bloods were at peace. Like you could see multiple pictures of Tupac where he's got blue and he's got red. Like he wore, he wore both colors because he was bringing peace to them and shit like that. So when you say Nipsey Hussle was, you know, all about the community and shit like that, so was Tupac. He was literally bringing peace to the two biggest gangs that anybody can did think you, of. Did you watch the newest uh, Tupac doc? No. Uh, it was it was released um, probably like six months ago, I think. Yeah, it's pretty good, but it, it talks a lot about his his mom and the role she played in his life. Yeah, so his mom was a Black Panther, and like the power. while she was pregnant with Tupac, she, her, and twenty other Black Panthers were in jail and going to court because they they were supposedly going to bomb U.S. buildings, which was bullshit. And there's evidence to it. Obviously, she actually was the one that was. She was her own attorney and the 20 others attorney, and she got them off. They were acquitted. So there's like interviews where Tupac, they asked Tupac what's he want, what he wants to be, and he says, I'm going to be a revolutionary. Like this mm-hmm. dude was all about trying to bring peace to, to his race and, and all this other shit. So, yeah, he came like we're, we're going to get into like the death row records and shit like that. But so um, – after all that was going on, he was he was uh, arrested for sexual assault, and this chick during the court during the court the trial and shit like that literally admitted to starting to blow him in the middle of a club. She, I believe, her exact words were, "I was kissing, I kissed his penis in the middle of the sounds club." Like a, sounds like assault to me. <laughs> on Take him. Take me to jail, sweetheart. And, Take me to jail. And then there's also a, a message. <laughs> That she left on his hotel answering machine that the cops deleted. This ha- this came out in the news. That she loved his junk and she wants more of it. And then he gets arrested for assault. So she was getting destroyed in in the court, like in the in this court case. The prosecution was screwed. So they literally went to Tupac and said, "We didn't disclose certain pictures to you." So if you want, we can we could do a mistrial. And Tupac said, "No, I, I want to clear my name." What happened that night? The night before the jury was gonna come out, he was called to Quad Studios and got two bullets in his head. They went in the back, out the front, and Dexter Isaacs was the shooter, admitted to sh- being the shooter, and uh, said that Jimmy, I can't remember his nickname, Jimmy something Rosemont hired him to kill Tupac that night. Who is Jimmy Rosemont? An informant for the FBI. Yeah. Hmm. So that was an execution that night. And that's the night that, you know, that was 
He was in New York City at a fucking record studio at night, and supposedly that's oh, that's, that's the night that supposedly he he went after Biggie and all that other yeah, fucking yeah. bullshit. So he ended up going to jail for the assault. He was in jail for ten months, ten or eleven, something like that. And they had him in solitary confinement almost twenty four seven. And you know what they call that? Penal code brainwashing, because you're literally in a small room by yourself every day for hours and hours and hours and hours and you kind of fucking lose your mind then yeah, of course enter the hero suge knight who tells him he'll post his bail and signs him to a record deal he signs him to three records tupac didn't want to do it but apparently he wanted to work with dre and snoop and suge wasn't letting dre and snoop work with anybody unless they were signed to death row but so he signs a death row with for three cds and he's first cds were all eyes on me, and he did a two CD record, so he can get two CDs off of the fucking off the contract right away. And then he did Machiavelli, but a week before he was killed, he told Suge he's done with he's done with Death Row. He's he's out. He actually had a record la- his own record label, uh, Euthanasia Records, all set up, <laughs> ready to fucking leave Death Row, and he actually got in physical fights with Suge Knight after he told him this. Um, they go to the Tyson fight, and um, well, here's another video of of his security. So uh, his security was told not to bring guns, not to have guns on them, and that's the first time they were ever told not to not to carry when they were guarding Tupac. To say what if I would have had my gun. While I was working at 662, I heard something over the next tells that we all carry for security. And what I heard was, got him, got him, got him. Michael talks about hearing um, um, something over the radio. Well, he would have heard it over Reggie's radio because he wouldn't have had a radio that night. Then someone else came on the radio and said, hey, don't say nothing over the radio, which was the next tells we were using radio to radio. And, and, and I just clearly heard somebody say, don't say that over the radio. But the person who said it was not homeboy security, nor was it one of our security guards. It was, to me, a, would be like a stranger. Someone, and the person that said that was Caucasian. Definitely not African American. So... His security guard heard over his own radio someone say, got him, got him, got him. And then another person that wasn't part of their security say, don't say that shit over the radio. So it was it was part of that fucking group that was guarding Tupac that set him up. You're saying it was an inside job? I'm saying it was the government because also the government was trailing him for at least a week before the murder. So... Tupac's murder was caught on tape by the FBI. That's known. That's like known everywhere, I guess. Tupac before or Tupac before Biggie was killed. He was trailed for a week by the FBI before his murder. Also, like, Tupac's dad. Here you go. Here's Tupac's dad literally saying he was trailed for a week. Beefy D confessed to the United States government in a proffer agreement to handing his nephew Orlando Anderson the gun that ultimately killed your son Tupac Shakur. After Orlando was jumped at the MGM Grand, you've never spoken on this. How does that make you feel that he confessed to that and the government gave him a deal? Well, I think the key question there is the government. The government gave him the deal. The same, he was being tailed by the government the night of his assassination. He was being tailed by the government Quad studio. That's a known fact. Known fact. So I don't know this guy, Keith. I I don't know. Maybe he had to say that to get out of some issue. I don't know. I just know it looked like a setup to me. Him and Biggie were both trailed for a week by the FBI. So their their deaths were literally on tape. That's weird. It's, it's fucked up. Also, Biggie was killed to cover up Tupac's death. Did you hear me? I heard Biggie it. was killed f- just because they 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 didn't want them to find out who actually killed Tupac. They wanted right. it to be an East Coast West Coast rap 
war, rap war. Here's the rapper. Divide and conquer. Yeah, dude. Here's the Divide here's the rap uh, here's the rapper prodigy. Wow. Pac was a pal too. Pac knew about all that Six shit. Why you think they murdered? This shit? It wasn't no rap war. It wasn't because he jumped and he jumped. Go Orlando. No, 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 no. That's a motherfucking lie. The government killed Pop. The feds had something to do with it. They set that up. And they, and they had something to do with Biggie getting killed too. And then they tried to make it look like a rap. I mean, it makes sense. Yes. Here's a... Uh, makes, makes sense to me, bro. It's ODB. To me, it's like... Everybody's scared of the government, you know what right. I'm saying? Because they killed Tupac and they killed Biggie Smalls. He's on TRL. I don't care what y'all say. That's my seeing. Who cares? <laughs> um, I'm just letting y'all know. Y'all could be afraid of the government all y'all want to. I've been afraid of the government for 29 years. Y'all ain't telling me I was Jesus, so it's okay. I love you. Did ODB get killed too? Yep. <laughs> That's what I'm saying, dude. And then I don't know who this guy is. I don't know. He's a. I don't know if he's a rapper or what, but um, he tells you some shit too. Tupac. Oh, was... Tupac was murdered without question. Tupac. The FBI was uh, had Tupac and Big, for that matter, under surveillance for at least a week prior to the murder. So that means even the murder was caught on tape by the FBI. Now, mind you, Pac was a serious threat. His mother was a Fini Shakur, former leader of the New York City Panthers. This is the same black woman who walked into a New York City federal courthouse pregnant with Tupac and defended herself and 20 other Panthers from that famous Panther 21 trial when they were charged with plotting to blow up federal buildings, which was nothing but a COINTELPRO setup. Pregnant with Pac, no legal experience. This black woman defends herself and all 20 of them, 21 of them walk out of prison. So naturally the child of that has to be watched. Geronimo Pratt, his godfather, Matulu Shakur, I believe possibly the stepfather. At the time of his death, he was um, working to politicize the Crips and the Bloods in LA. Tupac was a threat. The number one selling rapper in the world, okay, is a revolutionary. They could not allow that. After he split from death row, Tupac was on his way to do some revolutionary things, so they cut him down before he could grow. He was killed by the government, dude. He was killed by the FBI. And yeah, man. So three letter, so three um, letter uh, organizations, man. There's a de there's a detective who worked for the FBI. His name was <coughs> Russell Poole. He blew the whistle on his on his coworkers because blow the whistle, who who blow the whistle. Different rap song. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Literally, he blew the whistle on them killing Tupac and killing Biggie to cover up Tupac's death. He also found out that Death Row Records was doing drug running, and they were trying to remove the peace trees, the peace truce between the Bloods and the Crips. He also found out that Death Row was connected to the FBI counterintelligence, and Tupac had to go. Tupac had to go. Yep. It's fucked up, man. Yeah, dude. Fucking yep. bitch ass government. Fuck you, government. Yeah, dude. You Easy. said you call them bitch asses. Well, they are bitch ass. They know yeah, they're bitch asses. Bitch ass Yeah. Fucking tell them. Bitch ass itis, motherfucker. Yeah. Um, <laughs> everybody thinks that the dude that the dude that came out, um, Keefe D who they arrested in Vegas a few months oh. ago that he did it, but, dude, Tupac's dad even just said, like, he didn't have nothing to do with the fucking murder. The government gave him a deal. He was probably trying to get out of some other shit, so they gave him a deal, and he admitted to killing Tupac. Right. Shit's nuts, dude. What else? What else you got? Damn, that wasn't good enough? I thought this was a good episode. No, that's uh, no. I think I. I mean, I'm. I'm on. I'm. You got me on this. You one. got anything? Any rap conspiracies? For me, um, there's a dude. There's a ton of them. These are just the main one: Tupac's murder, Eminem not being Eminem, Easy E getting fucking shot up with AIDS. Yeah, like Dr. Dre and P Diddy being a bunch of little fucking bitches. Dude. Snoop being a little bitch. I can't stand Snoop Dogg anyway. I don't know why people like Snoop Dogg. He's not good. Well, he's he's 
part of the that culture, man. That West Coast TikTok culture, sucks. bro. That, it, I'm not saying he's a great rapper, but he is but an entertainer. Is a whistle, and he, sizzle, sizzle, sizzle. He's dude. That I mean, he he changed. I remember the first time I heard Snoop in that uh, that one Dre song, and it like blew my mind bro it was just different it was different it was west coast west coast culture we had, i had never seen before what song oh my god i have to look it up this is the one where he talks about his nephew banging his girl it might have been <laughs> um, <laughs> nothing but a g was he in nothing but a g thing yeah he was him and nate Hold on. nate dog were like butt buddies weren't they no 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 it was uh Nothing but a G thing. Yeah. It's, okay. That yeah, was yeah. 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 Okay. So that that blew your mind. I hey, nothing but a G thing. You don't remember that? Oh, I do. I remember that. I remember wh- whose friend's house I was in. I was in their fucking basement, bro. It was like, you know, I, you don't, you remember those moments in life that are like slightly yeah. life changing when you hear something new or see something or try something different. Yeah. And it just, or just like hanging out with friends. Yeah. yeah. And like something Bro, that's one of those those core memories they say, you know, if we're going to be Yeah. fucking lame. yeah, lame, I guess. <laughs> but that was one of them, man. Like I I mean, I know when we met, bro, I was I was definitely I thought I was I thought I was Shug thought Knight, bro. I <laughs> you thought you were a gangster. I thought I was Shug Knight. Um Yeah. But dude, I you know, I I grew up in a a mixed household. My my stepdad was black and I grew up on Motown and then hip hop and it was a big part of my my childhood, my my preteen and my teenage years, dude. Like, and then I yeah. then I kind of became a teenager and a young young adult and started doing actual gangster shit, robbing drug dealers. And I remember a story about you like grabbing a dude's shirt, pulling over the head, just fucking kneeing him in the face. Or yeah, well, like that. you know, when you're playing, <laughs> when you're balling, you're hooping, and motherfuckers talking shit on your mom's, you gotta just, you know, dude, your brother tells it the best, man. He, He's that, probably uh, what it's always. We're shit back and forth. <laughs> <laughs> we're, me and this guy, we're hooping, we're talking shit back and forth, and he says something about my mom, and I said, you know, I, I don't play that shit, so I say something very disrespectful to him, and he just jabs me in my mouth. Your brother says my face lit up like it was Christmas morning. Like, thank God you hit me, because <laughs> now I get to fuck you up. Um, but yeah, dude, I started doing real gangster shit, and I thought I was—I thought I was part of the culture. I'm glad I finally woke up and realized that I'm just a, a white kid from upstate New York <laughs> who uh, who yeah. wanted to be cool. But and you know, it it made me partly who I am today, and I'm thankful for that. But. Uh, you can still yeah, be I was, gangsta. I was out Yo, there, man. My my favorite my favorite Gangst, gangsta rapper you know, is from the now. fucking Hicktown, but so Adam Calhoun. Oh, oh, he's from shit. Chicago, yeah. but he's also from the South too, so it ain't never been a problem. We can hit him with a shotgun. You ain't gonna see tomorrow. He a motherfucker gonna I'm a motherfucker gonna ain't that a motherfucker, motherfucker, motherfucker. Dude, ain't nobody fucking with Lil D, bro. Lil D's just <laughs> Little Dicky, oh dude, we brought up Little Dicky. That's we bring gangster Little Dicky rap, up, man. <laughs> in two episodes in a row, we brought Little Dicky up. What are we doing here? Oh, well, <laughs> well, not two That's episodes in a row because the last bro. episode was Aliens, but yeah. Anyway. Oh my god. Uh, but anyways, so yeah, dude. All like, right, so uh, you think Eminem's still Eminem? Uh, I think, I, I think he absolutely could be bought, paid for, corrupted. You don't, I don't think, think it's, it's a replacement a guy? Nah, I mean, that's that. That's when we're you know we start saying people have been replaced, you know, deep fakes and shit like that. We're really digging into the weeds and I do. Uh, I think there's tons of deep fakes out there. Tons. I mean, I get asked all the time, like, or I get told all the time, "You look really familiar." <laughs> you think um, you're a deep fake, and it's not. <laughs> um. So like. I mean, I might have my deep fake out there. Who yeah. knows? Uh, but all right, all right. Uh, do you think Suge Knight killed Eazy-E? I think uh, I don't know if he did it because it's. I think that was happened a little before Death Row Records really popped off. But um, but I mean, him and Dre were maybe feuding. he might he might he might know something about it or have you yeah. know he might be close enough to those situations to know who actually did it. 
And yeah, it's potential. None of his, you know, none of his kids or his significant others had it. AIDS is just randomly. Yeah, dude, it was definitely a setup, yeah. dude. A hundred percent a setup. Um, yeah. And then. But I don't know if it was Suge Knight because I remember Suge Knight. He was like in the NFL or trying to be in the NFL, and then, you know, <laughs> no, he 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 did. He he played professional uh, football or was trying well, to he's could play a line back when. Yeah, he was a yeah. big boy. Um. Yeah. And then uh, you think Nipsey Hussle was killed for trying to make a documentary about Dr. Sebi? Uh, I'm not sure if that's the specific reason, but it absolutely yeah. could be. I mean, I don't, I don't trust shit that our government does and anymore. Who, kill, who killed Biggie and Pac? Who got me, <laughs> who got me killed? <laughs> the, uh, them like and a, Fluff Daddy. Yo, I think they were trying to pin this. There's an Eminem lyric where he blames it on Puff Daddy, and then at the end of the song, he's like, "I'm just kidding." Puffy, you know he, I love dude, you. He changed, I think that was all just a, name, a fucking distraction to make people think Diddy did it, but I don't think he did. Yeah. Diddy, I hate calling it. Puff Daddy. Your name's fuck up. You don't change your no, name eight times. Your name's Puff Daddy, you it's, fucking homo. It's Fluff Daddy. Fluff Daddy, yeah, because he'd be fluffing. He's a fluffer. He fluffs all of his rappers. He just, you know, gets them hard. Dude, there's, <laughs> there's, them uh, hard. There's, there's stories of him trying to, like, fuck other rappers no, and shit. It's, he's a fagola. And like, yeah, and like hanging out in in uh, hotel rooms could, with one other dude. You could tell and your shit. friends to give my friends, and we could yeah. be friends. We could do this every weekend. <laughs> that I hate you. <laughs> that I hate you. I can't believe that's Michael's favorite rapper. It's crazy, dude. It's dude. wild. I can't believe. Yeah, I can't believe he bought his album, man. He used to rock I'll that be shit. Missing I be, you. <laughs> oh, do my little. <laughs> Stupid little dance he does. Mike, I love, Mike, I love you, bro. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, you can be so mad. I told him. <laughs> I could be a nice brother and cut it out, but I'm not going to. <laughs> not gonna cut that out either. Oh All right, bro, God! So. Yay. Yeah, man. Uh, so what it all boils down to is who are they and why are they killing That's rappers? coming soon. Who are they? Hey, D. Yo. I love you, up? bro. Godspeed. Love you, bro. Godspeed. You've reached Joe with Godspeed Podcast. If you're friendly, leave a message. If you work for the government, don't call here. Hey, Joe. It's me. I just... Uh, had something kind of embarrassing to tell you. I was actually the one who had the Puff Daddy CD. I mean, it came with a shiny suit. It came with an instructional dance video. It came with an instructional whispering uh, cassette. Take that, take that, take that. I mean, what do you want me to do? You know? I throw my rolling in the sky, wave it side to side. Like, I mean, I just, you know? Anyways, don't tell anyone, bro. Later.